Welcome to the Brew Drink Run podcast, brought to you by the only website that promotes brewing your own beer, consuming the best craft beers in the world, and then running off the calories, brewdrinkrun.com. out there to all of our listeners. Hello. This is episode 113 of the Brew Drink Run podcast. My name is Raymond. This is Keith. If this is your first time listening to the show, this is a mini episode where we drink some beer and we talk about it. The previous episode and the next episode are full episodes where we talk about home brewing and running in addition to our regular into a little bit of running. Yeah, we, we just talk about some stuff. We talk about yeah. beer, and beer and sometimes and they're running. really good beer, and sometimes you know they're sometimes just sometimes they're normal, okay, sometimes so, they're know. great, sometimes they're so so, and we run and we and we brew while we run. Yeah, you know we do all that stuff. <laughs> we but this we're we just know. drinking today. All just right. gonna drink. If you like the show, please rate us on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you grab your podcast, and write us a short review. Those ratings and reviews help more people find the show. Or better yet, tell a friend. Post about it on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and be sure to ha- tag us at Brew Drink Run. So we are drinking some beer tonight, but uh, instead of drinking our usual one beer, we've got three beers. We've actually, yes, we've got three beers. Uh, Ska Brewing from uh, Durango, Colorado was nice enough to send us some uh, cans of beer they do. Looks like a couple of these are year rounds and one might be a kind of seasonal offering. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, uh, but we have uh, three beers that they sent. We have the uh, the Buster Nut Brown Ale, which is what we're going to lead off with. And uh, we also are going to move into, after that, the Steel Toe Milk Stout, which uh, is uh, one that I haven't had. I've had the first, the other two. Oh. And uh, this one is the uh, Decadent Imperial IPA. So we've got three different beers. We'll move up by ABV. Well, okay. That's how we're going to hash hash these out. So uh, 5.3% on the uh, Buster Nut Brown Ale, which is going to be the first one. Of course, their their whole uh, idea and motif is, uh, I mean, ska. They're dealing with the kind of ska musical scene. Right. So you've got the, uh, you know, you've got the, the kind of typical English... Um, you know, uh, I don't know what what do you call him? Uh, you know, English. I don't know, ska ska guy. Uh, uh, kind of doing the yeah, old yeah, skanking yeah, yeah. dance on the uh, on the front there. Okay. So um, so I'm gonna guess. Uh, given that this is gonna be an English brown ale, right? Makes sense. Makes sense. And um, yeah, five point three percent on this guy. Um, you know, their artwork. I wouldn't say is. You know, over the top, great, but it fits with what they're, the, with the style of what they're doing. They kind of have yeah. a a music motif going, and they're dealing with a lot of these kind of punk rock ska type mm-hmm. things. So you know, steel toe. A lot of the sure. punk rock guys wear the steel toe boots, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of you know, skull skull skeleton guys and that kind of imagery. So I think yeah. it all it all works really well um, for what they're what they're into and what they're trying to do. Yeah. There's nothing nice that ever seems stuff. out of place with them. Right. So. Right. So, uh, I mean, I could kind of live without the, the juvenile name on the brown ale, <laughs> personally, <laughs> but, you know, but it probably seemed like a good idea about 10 years ago yeah, or whenever when this probably first came out, you know, when they were a lot younger. So, uh, so we got a brown ale here. Raymond, what does this guy ale. look like? This one looks like a cola, just kind of straight yeah. up. It's got that uh, reddish brown tint mm-hmm. to it. Um, very typical for a brown ale, maybe a little darker than your usual one. Yeah, but, maybe uh, a little bit. It's got, I mean, when you really hold it up to the light, you got that kind of right around the edges, the like kind of reddish orange hues yeah, to it but caramel. yeah exactly but yeah it's fairly typical it poured with a a, a decent head to start yeah, and um you know they're they're sort of fading a little bit kind of got a like a thin layer a little ring around the edges to these but uh but not too bad so let's go into the aroma on this again nothing too out of the ordinary for no. the style but totally totally what you'd expect that yeah. kind of brown malt nuttiness to it exactly. maybe, maybe a touch of toffee caramel yeah, brown sugar that kind of thing but it's nothing that i would say is over the top for you know for for the style nothing out of the ordinary it certainly doesn't have like a big american hop bitterness to no, it either no, so no. um so again i think uh english style is definitely the the, the the right the right thing to go here all right let's uh take a sip of this Ooh. 
pretty much follows the nose. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's got oh, there's a, there's a, there's kind of a mild a mild kind of roasty quality yes, that kind of absolutely. goes with the nuttiness. Um, there is a hot presence. It's not huge. It's, yeah, it's got a little bit of bitterness. To it's it. just got that typical almost um, almost even acidic English style kind of bitterness. That typical English okay. bitterness. You know, I don't know if you yeah, if yeah, you drink yeah, an yeah. English mild, there's bitterness to it, but it's not like your American style beers where you can pick out a hop flavor. This just has a, just a very mild, very solid bitterness to it. This is actually pretty pretty solid brown ale. Yeah, I mean that's I, not that's not a style I gravitate to. It's not uh, me either. Um, in fact, I, I, it's I tend to think of them as being pretty just kind of straightforward, even a little boring. Yeah. style, but this is this is good. Well, I think um, I think what's kind of lost in in craft beer culture these days is some of these simpler styles. We're all looking for the next uber extreme, right. big, huge uber flavorful mm-hmm. beer and sometimes i think beers like this uh and i i mean uh, let's let's assume it's been around for 10 years they might, this might have gotten some real positive uh, uh you know like buzz about it when it first yep. came out i can imagine that the overall ratings have gone down over time but this is a solid very solid very solid english brown ale there's no reason to you know, poo poo on this for any reason other than the fact that it's not, uh, you know, the the next big double IPA. Do you know what I mean? Right. So I mean, I think that it's kind of a this is kind of an interesting year round kind of offering to to have available. But um, but it's good. This is a good beer. It's a very, it's, good, it's a very beer. good beer. I mean, I don't know that I would go insanely out of my way for it, but it's solid. It's really solid beer. And now, and we should say these are not beers that are normally available to us. Um, mm-hmm. So, um, <clears throat> I think if this was on the shelf, this might actually be a brown that I would pick up. But okay, again, well, I don't good. pick them up yeah. very often. See, yeah, there, there's a handful of brown ales that are brown ales that I would pick up. I like um, I like sweet waters, and the, but they're all more American mm-hmm. style hoppy ones, right? So, I mean, I really like uh, Smutty Noses, uh, Old Brown Dog. I think that's a it's a really good right. kind of hop forward um big brown ale. Uh there's a there's a couple of others that aren't uh coming to mind immediately cuz I don't tend to buy them very often. Mm-hmm. Um I was kind of a little bit disappointed when uh Dogfish Head dropped theirs, the Indian Brown. Oh yeah, that's right. Cuz I thought that was again another kind of Americanized <clears throat> really hop forward but really good kind of nutty toasty flavor to that one as Didn't well. Didn't realize they dropped that. <clears throat> that that's how, much, how yeah. little I look for these. Exactly. Things. Yeah. I mean and, and the same goes for me. It's like I'm not a big brown I'm I'm you know I'm 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 just as guilty as probably the next guy. I kind of tend to like the extremes but uh sure. since uh you know since starting to work in a brewery I've been like making a conscious effort to try and reconnect with uh what you might call simpler styles mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. So I'm I'm more versed in, you know, what where where everything came from and can learn to appreciate it again. Right. And it's you know, and sometimes the simplicity of a beer is what makes it great. Um I don't think I think that's lost on a lot of people these days. Mm-hmm. But I think it's gonna come around again. You know, there'll there'll be a point when <clears throat> when the when the whole cycle will come around and right. being able to make a solid amber red brown ale is going to be important because people are going to get tired of just, you know, mouth, you know, terrorizing flavor. You know, they're going to get exactly. like, I just want a good, solid beer. People are going to, it will cycle around again. So, In fact, I was at a, a, a brewery this weekend, Soaring Ridge in Roanoke, Virginia, and uh, first flight I got was all of their, their everyday beers. Uh-huh. Um, some of the ones that they're extreme ones the, that you've been sure. talking mm-hmm. about were the were the everyday beers that they had done something to, and I wanted to know what the base beers were before yeah. I got into all of the craziness. So it's a, uh, um, I think you're right. I think you're right. It's it's good to go out there and try the, uh, the normal stuff, the everyday stuff. Yeah, I mean, and you know, it's good to have a good everyday beer. You know, obvi- obviously at this point, I. I take home a lot of service service beer so i mean like you know our our pale ale or ipa or pilsner i'm really in love with the pilsner right now as the weather's starting to turn a little bit so but you know i mean it's good to have a solid everyday go-to you know and i think that this is one that uh probably for people who've been drinking it for a while out there it is it is probably their go-to you know oh i'll i'll just have a i'll have a i'll just have you know i'll have a you know i'll have a a buster nut you know and that's that's all that's all it takes all right, so we're going to move on to beer number two. 
Just uh, rinsing my glass a little bit, drinking a little water here. We got the Steel Toe Milk Stout. Okay, a milk stout in a can. <clears throat> in okay. a can, canned a milk stout. So, so the, the last one, the Buster Nut, was a 5.3. We're moving up to a, what are we moving up to? 5.5. Oh. So not a big <laughs> jump, not a big <laughs> jump, but, you know, it was. it is higher, so... And, uh, and it probably makes sense, too. I mean, you know, milk stouts are generally not high in ABV. Even right. though they're pretty big in flavor, they're not super filling, and it's pretty easy to follow with uh, another style beer after a milk stout as opposed to, let's say, a big bourbon barrel-aged sure. imperial stout when you're talking about this kind of thing. So we've got Steel Toe here. Uh, it's got the uh, this kind of ska checkerboard design, which seems to be on all of the things here. you got a very cartoonish cow with steel toe boots on it. So, uh, oh, oh, maybe a mm-hmm. reference to what was that movie? Uh, the one with uh, oh, Top Secret. Top Secret. Wow, yeah. how did I know that? I knew exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> this absurd movie, but yes, there is a maybe maybe a little bit, but uh, yeah, yeah, but um, I think I think it's more the 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 you know the the punk rock guys with yeah. their steel toe boots. Well, I'm looking at their website here, too, and they, they refer to this as a traditional English cream stout. So maybe okay. they're pushing the English thing pretty yeah. hard here. And uh, I can see on the side of the can here, this uh, has won several medals along the way. So Great American Beer Festival, this won gold in 2011, bronze in 2009, and the uh, 2012 uh, World Beer Cup Gold Award as well. well so done. this has gotten some... Uh, some definite uh, style uh, acclaim. So, you know, a lot of these, all these festivals, it's uh, based on style guidelines. So, uh, so obviously this should be fairly well true to form for, for the style of the beer. So let's uh, get into the appearance. All right. So uh, you've, again, very typical stout here, mm-hmm. nice and dark. Kind of, um, kind of more of a brownish than a, than, a than necessarily a, a, a jet black. Yeah, it's not a jet black. I'm definitely yeah. getting some of that kind of. A little bit of light around the edge, mm-hmm. edges of this glass when it's held to the light. Again, it poured with a really, really nice big, looking head, tacky, yeah. thick head, and it it's settled fast. Settled, fi- it's yeah, it's faded pretty quick to a, 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 a almost a carbon copy of the other one. A little light, thin layer, and just a little bit of a ring around the edges. Hmm. Rome is good. It's mm-hmm. it's not. It's almost not as sweet as I would normally expect from a milk stout. And I think at this point, uh, you know, left hand has pretty much set the standard uh, for, for milk stouts. It's it's definitely more kind of that bitter chocolate yeah. mm-hmm. than it is it has more of a sweetness. Uh huh. Usually with the with the milk stout, I feel like it like a sweet creamy, sweet cream right, kind of right. flavor. Maybe a little bit more milk chocolate, but this has a little bit more of that kind of dry bitter baker's mm-hmm. chocolate kind of aroma to it. A t- tiny bit of kind of roasted malt in there. Hmm, mm, it's good. good Mouth feel. Yeah. Nice and creamy. It's nice and creamy. It's not thick. It's not nope. heavy. Nope. But it's got. It just has a, a almost kind of like a creamy oil oiliness to it. Just kind of goes down really easy. Yeah. Uh, the bitter chocolate still comes through. I think on the on the taste. Mm-hmm. I like the way this one tastes, but it's a little bit outside what I would expect. Again, from a milk from stout. A, yeah. It's got almost a. A, a soury note to it in a way like a almost like 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 in a way of like sour cream or that kind uh, of sourness sure, to it sure sure you know like sour cream is you know not tart but it has that kind of little right. bit of sourness to it and it has that kind of that kind of sourness in there and it's mixing with that kind of you know like a dark chocolate a little bit of roast i can see that yeah yeah, it's it's nice. It's I, I like this a lot. I do kind of like this too. I think the first couple of sips I took, I, I again, um, you know, it's mm. it's so easy to compare everything to whatever you set as the benchmark, and I think what becomes something that's hard to do the more you drink beer is to be able to go, well, this is where I set these things, and yeah. then go, well, let me look at this beer in its own original way, and then you can start to chip away and push aside that thing that you consider. Mm-hmm what it should be and then start to look at this beer for its own unique character yeah. and style. So um definitely fits within the parameters I'd say of a milk stout. Mm-hmm. 
It's got the it's got the feel you'd it's want. Got the feel. It's uh it's lower in alcohol. Mm-hmm. It's got some sweetness to it. Um it's got and definitely it, it's 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 in the sky it's but again, it's that the little that little kind of soury note to it yeah. is sort of what makes it a little bit distinct. I was gonna say it's got a little more uh it's, it does have that sweetness on the end. So I keep thinking um I stuck that he- that that in my head, but yogurt y it's got yeah, that sweet sure. yogurt. Same to same it, same know? kind of thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's actually probably a better a better analogy because a sour cream, it, it w- isn't really the kind of flavor you want in a beer, but that yogurty, that kind of sweet, uh, like a sweet yogurt flavor, yeah. kind of makes sense because it has that kind of almost like lactic. Well, yeah, I mean well, it does have what it does, yeah, it's milk stuff, <laughs> so it's got that kind of lacticy yeah thing going on in it. Oh. So, yeah, this is well done. I could, I would, I, this I would certainly. I mean, if I. I mean, I'm not so sure personally. I would probably pick up the brown ale on a regular basis, even though it's solid. Mm-hmm. I think uh, I think that's one of those uh, best beer beer offered on the menu kind of picks sure. for me, right. um, and I would be happy to drink it. But I'm not sure I would go out of my way to pick it up. This one, if I was, I mean, I know like they let's say they sell this. Uh, I think you said they just launched in Florida. Yeah, I think yeah. Or did you say that off off mic? Or yeah, was I think that I did say okay? That so apparently so they're just launching in some parts of Florida. I know it's available in North Carolina. I would probably pick up a, a couple of cans, if not a four and or six pack. I'm not sure how they sell this of this beer. Oh. I mean, it's a good. It's is a solid stout. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, it is. I mean, I probably you know like I know I really like their their regular IPA too. So I'd probably pick that up. So so this is excellent. Good stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. So. So we're two down. We gotta we gotta fill some time while we finish finish these beers. So you, uh, you, you ready for Keith's spreadsheet? Am I ready for it? No, I mean no. <laughs> 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 well, why don't we why don't we get through the beers first? Uh, so, <clears throat> so you had had any ska beers before now? I think I had one. I think I did a trade with somebody out that way uh-huh. and uh, got an extra, but I couldn't tell you what it was off the top of my head. Probably, uh, just their IPA or something. I right. That yeah. Real quick. That would make sense. That's pretty fair. It's a fairly common, uh, probably fairly common pickup. So, the labels just looked really familiar when I was. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've been see. I mean, I've been on enough, you know, trips up to North Carolina. But you know, I, I would, I, I would try. And I'm always trying to pick up something out of the ordinary because you figure, oh, one of these days I'll come across these again. Um, and, and again, a brown ale is not maybe something that I would have normally picked up. So, so, but I've definitely uh, gotten um, their their regular IPA, the Modus Hopperandi, I think it's yeah. called. I've picked up that and and fairly fairly regularly when I see it. Um, I think that's an excellent IPA. I would be happy to uh, to grab that in um, in six pack form when I see it. So, and I've had the the beer we were about to have as well, but we'll get to that in just a second. I really thought I had had their mole stout, but I don't have it marked oh. on my stuff. But huh. <coughs> yeah, I've had I've actually had that too. It's pretty good. The aut- aut- autumnal, autumnal, autumnal some mole, 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 mole yeah. All right, last but certainly not least is decadent uh, imperial IPA. This guy here uh, was originally their ten year anniversary beer uh, when it came out. Oh wow. Well. So they did this as a 10-year anniversary. It apparently uh, was well-received, and they decided that they were going to uh, start doing this year-round. So I think now it's a year-round offering. When I first had it, I found it in a 22-ounce bottle. Uh, I think they still do the 22-ounce yeah, wax, that's wax they dipped bottle. But now they probably have what I'm going to guess is four-pack cans of this. Maybe It could be six, but probably four, four packs. Yeah. yeah. So very cool uh, label here. This is my favorite out of the three. Got kind of a Jack Skellington guy with some yep, hops mm-hmm. in his mouth, and he's tipping his his bowler hat to us. Uh huh. Yeah. This is a this is definitely the best uh, best label out of the three. It's a. Uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just because it's black and it's got yeah. the kind of like the bright red. I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not even sure that it's necessarily any better in picture. I think it just might be color combination. You yeah, know, little contrast happening yeah. there. All right, so we've got the decadent uh, IPA. Let's uh, see what this is all about. Now, I've had this before. Um, actually, uh, Scott was nice enough to send us three cans of each of these, so I ha- drank one of them already to uh, to do for review. And uh, 
and I but I had it before. I picked it up in Asheville a few years ago, mm-hmm. and I found a, and I had known a little bit about ska brewing. I think I might have already had the Modus Hopperandi, mm-hmm. so they were on my radar at least in the sense of I should pick some stuff up if I see it. I didn't right. know. I can remember at the time going, oh, I didn't even know these guys distributed here, so I was excited to see it. So I went into. Went into one of the local shops, kind of like a wine shop, beer shop. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. And picked up a bottle, saw it on the shelf. I was like, oh, this looks good. So, you know, grabbed it. Probably saw the skeleton yeah. guy on the label and thought, well, how cool is that? Saw the wax wax treatment and everything. Came home and drank it, and it was about four or five months out of date. So I was like, oh, ouch. And I drank the beer, and boy, did it taste like it. And so uh, I kind of, you know, I gave bad. it, I gave it, you know, I gave it a personal review, uh, and I was like, well, I'll, I'll try this again sometime. Yep. So these cans came in, and uh, I was curious to see. Immediately, I thought, oh, well, let me see if there's a, a date on this. Yeah. And so they do have a Best Buy date, Ska. And on the bottom, it says February 11, 2017, or actually 17. And I, that's I, a and long. It is. That is a really long time for a double IPA. Now, it's not unknown. I know for, a, for quite a while, I think, uh, I don't know if they still do it or not, but I know Victory would put a year date on everything. Mm-hmm. That was just their what they do. Yeah. I mean, some people, I think before Kraft got as big um, as it did and people got as particular, I think the the Best Buy dates have gotten to a point where they've shrunk, you know, and people sure. have become more particular. Um, but that got me to thinking. I was like, man, did I really drink like a, if it was already four or five months out of date when I had it, was that like a year, almost a year and a half year old, and a half old yeah. double IPA? And I was like, well, I guess maybe it was. Um, <laughs> but it was. I mean, when I had, first time I had it, it was a super malt four. There wasn't much hot profile right. left at all. I was a little bit disappointed, right. saw the date, and I don't know who to blame for that, whether it's the distributor, whether it's the who store, knows, point, it doesn't yeah. matter, you know. Um, so I was glad to see this, and so my guess is that this is somewhere around a month or so old. So we should be in the clear on what would be a, a nice, fresh ten uh, percent double IPA or That's Imperial helpful. IPA. So, all right. So let's have a look at this yes. beer. Uh, crystal really clear. Nice crystal clear. Yeah, there is nothing Just going on in here. That's kind of. No apple haze. juice. Yeah. Looking, um, it's got a kind of light, very, it's light for a double IPA. Yeah. So, I mean, they're using some lighter malts um, to, 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 you know, to get up to that, um, you know, to get up to that 10%. Mm-hmm. So, they're using probably some more, you know, biscuity malts or something like that as opposed Sounds to like right. your big, you know, dark cara- caramalts. So. But very pretty. Very mm-hmm. nice crystal clear. And, and once again, poured with a nice head as yep. we were talking, it sort of faded a little bit. So. Smells great. It does this is a really really good smelling beer? Surpri- surprisingly, given the color, that I'm, I'm getting a good bit of that kind of caramel toffee mm-hmm. flavor going on in this. A lot of uh, kind of citrusy grapefruit. Is that good? Yep, I get. Yep, yep. I'll go with that. There's some citrus, kind of slight little floral notes going on in there. I'm getting this time around. Still mm. uh, a lot of malt. Getting some pineapple on the nose. I just went back up there. Uh, well, I can taste that too. Okay. Yeah, I'm just getting. Started. I'm having. I haven't taken taken a sip, but I'm just went back up and like that kind of mango and pineapple mm-hmm. set suddenly started to come out in this. Well, I I just took my sip and and I'm getting a lot of malt. It's really strong malt, but it ends with a lot of those floral and and tropical fruits yep. that we've been uh, mentioning. That pineapple's definitely in there. Mm-hmm. I can get mango. Um, and it does have that kind of floral taste to it too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I don't know. I'm not sure I'd call this super, well, the, it's, it's got a bitter finish. It's got a strong bitter finish on this. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that kind of bitterness is almost, it's not, it's not intense, but it's bitter. If that's it, that makes any sense whatsoever and this is exactly what i felt the last time and i remember, I remember typing this up and going that doesn't make any sense but it's <laughs> it's bitter but it's not intense right you know it's got a lot of bitterness to it but it never like makes me go oh i don't want more of this mm-hmm. but it's got a lot of that but it's yeah a little pineapple a little mango 
kind of almost like a caramel slash biscuit biscuity malt going okay. on. Yeah, this is good. Uh, Alcohol. I can taste the ten percent. Yeah, then it's I mean, in I can there. I can actually really taste the ten percent on this. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not hidden. I don't feel like you're gonna buy a a four pack or six pack of this and not know what you're doing to yourself. Right. I mean, there are some double IPAs that are, you know, you can drink them all day long and you go and then, well, your day's short, you know, kind of <laughs> thing. So I, I feel like the alcohol on this is a little bit intense, but again, might be if at, at a month old, maybe at two months, three yeah, months, it yeah, settles a out sweet, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah, it is. This, is, like a, it this is. is a solid. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. And that pineapple, it's like, Hitting my aftertaste a lot, mm-hmm. so it's just kind of lingering in there. Yeah, solid. This is solid. a little bit orange, getting a little bit of like kind of like oh, citrusy orange. Yeah, in there. and that's and I that maybe that's that when you talk about the bitterness, I can get that orange peel kind of bitterness. Sure, too. yeah, because that's what I'm saying. It's like there's this. It's not. Yeah, it's not it's, bad. It, it's it's, it's, there, it's bitter, but it's not like pine bitter mm-hmm, or just like mm-hmm. or you know. I, I, I kind of feel like you know good IPAs and bad IPAs can kind of be broken up in that. If it's just, you know, malt and straight bitterness, or is it malt, hop flavor, hop right. character, and bitterness, you know? And this one definitely has hop character. Yes, it does. So, uh, but the bitterness, like I said, it's it's there. It's all over the beer, but it's not like, it's not like, oh, I can't finish this intense, right, right, right. you know? That's good. I think it's, um, I mean, I think person for my own personal taste, I'd like a little more balance. But I, again, I would certainly pick up more of this along the way. Oh, you know sure. what I mean? Oh, when sure. I was out and uh, out and about and traveling, if I saw, you know, if I saw this on the shelf, or uh, if I was buying a mixed six pack in mm-hmm. in a state that sold this, and I had a couple of holes left to fill, yeah, I would certainly throw one in because I mean, it's it's a it's a really good beer and worth playing with. I think too, just letting it sit for an, an yeah. extra month or two, yeah. All right. It's good stuff. All right. It is. All right, shall we? Yep. We're going back in time. Keep spreadsheet. Let's do this. All right, so this is the time of the podcast where Keith pits his extensive beer knowledge against my meager beer knowledge, (laughs) and we see what comes out on the other end. So uh, Keith's going to read me a review from his his list of beer reviews um, that date back for many, several years. Yes, Mm -hmm. for many, many. uh, My job is to try to guess which beer it is. All right, here we go. This uh, is currently listed as beer review number 2,465 in the spreadsheet. Okay. That might help you out in the long run. This is an American IPA. A soft caramel malt backbone is then taken over by hops. Grapefruit, resinous pine, some tropical fruits with a return to the resinous pine hops on the finish. This is a well-crafted West Coast-style IPA. So if you like big piney hops, find yourself a sixer of these. Four out of five, A-. minus. So this, is a, this has been around for a while. It's from my earlier days. Oh, So, okay. I mean, I can tell by the length of the review. that and <laughs> <laughs> um, I did apparently flesh this out a little bit for a brew drink run at some point. So okay. it is actually up on the site. Some some amount of all that is probably in there, and maybe some other dabblings of information from the website. So, uh, so w- your your number system is that by beer or by brewery? Brewery. So it's uh, alphabetical. Oh, okay. Three out of this is two thousand four hundred and sixty five. Out 3, of well, I can tell you here. Hold on, let me get to the bottom. Out of, uh, let's see, as of today, it would have gotten to 3,272. Okay. So, well, it's so the, near, near the, the end. Yeah. The uh, So the six pack, I think, I had a couple of things in mind as you were mm-hmm. reading, and then you said six pack, and they all went away. So uh, 
Now I'm leaning towards maybe a West Coast, so I'm thinking Sierra Nevada. Okay. My um, and the torpedo that comes in four packs, so that can't be it. So it's got to be their um, uh, just the regular old Sierra Nevada IPA. Okay, you went you went too far from um, the tree. It, it would be Ska's oh. Modus Hopperandi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you went, oh, you went, was yeah, this a, it was a little too. <laughs> I, I actually threw you a curveball by actually sticking with the same brewery. <laughs> I, but I got kind of in, I got the same letter. That's got to count for something. It does count for something. <laughs> I mean, and you're only one letter off on the second letter, right? So yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah a couple yeah. of letters. Anyway, so uh, so yeah. Well, I don't think I have any SJ beers on me. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. But yes, no, this is, I mean, they make, these guys make some, some pretty solid beer. Um, I have, like I said, I haven't had a chance to try a ton of their stuff. Uh, they've always been on my radar. It's just a matter of, uh, finding, uh, what they're putting out and getting a chance to try it. Yep. Um, excited to have another can of the steel toe to drink, uh, and mm-hmm. get kind of delve into that a little bit deeper for an, a, a full on brew drink run review. And, uh, the Buster Brown was, you it know, was it, yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, it is a really genuinely solid English style brown ale. Even yep. even if that's not the kind of thing that gets people jazzed right now, it's a good one. It is. It is a very good beer. Um, if you like brown ales and you come across that, don't shy away from it. Not at pick, all. Pick it up. It's a solid beer. And decadent as well. I mean, I'm enjoying this double IPA. So. I am too. All right. Any changes now that just been sitting for a second? A little more. Uh, getting a lot more of the tropical fruit. Uh, pineapple on the nose, whereas mm-hmm. it took me a while to find it before. Now it, uh, it almost it has, out. almost has like a hop slammy pineapple yep. aroma to it. Um, also, the alcohols come out on the aroma now as well as it's warmed up, which is pretty typical. I feel, I feel like I'm still in the same place on the taste. It's got, it's got the same kind of balance of, of flavor. That kind of sharp. Like like we said, like kind of pithy orange yeah. peel kind of bitterness to it. That kind of you know the the white of the orange kind of yeah. bitterness in there. Um, maybe a little bit more pine coming out than I had before, but otherwise, I mean it's it's solid. I think the more uh, this is one of those beers. I think the more I drink it, the more I like it. Yeah. You know, at first I'm kind of like, oh, this is good, and good. then the more the more it kind of warms up and develops a little bit, the more I kind of get into it. Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> You want to? You want to? You don't want? You don't want to tell everyone? I don't want to tell you. No, yeah, you just get, uh, for yeah, more about no, us. No, you no, don't no, care no, about no, us. <laughs> read, the, right. read the script. I gotta read. <laughs> it's hard. For more about us and Brew Drink Run, go to brewdrinkrun.com. Follow us on Twitter at brewdrinkrun, on Facebook at facebook.com slash brewdrinkrun, and Instagram at brewdrinkrun. Plus, all of our writers are untapped. Want to be part of the show? Email us at team at brewdrinkrun.com. Update us on your homebrew, your running training, or just let us know about your favorite beer destination or even beers. Even better than an email would be sending us some audio. It's as simple as calling us at 781-76-DRINK. That is 781-763-7465. We also have BDR t-shirts and technical shirts available at our site. Click on the store link. Our theme music is provided by Morning Lights. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you at the bar. Cheers. Cheers. All right, now it's time for the music. Play the music. You should have cut it out early before the fade. Oh. (laughs) This means just, we have to just, talk, right? Just, just, <laughs> made, just made the end perfectly <laughs> awkward for everyone. Oh, oh let's talk about reading. <laughs>